Today we're going to be checking out the Rotel RAP1580 Mark II. So this one comes double boxed. Outside one is the brown box and the inner one is the white box with green lettering. And on the top portion of the foam, you will find that there are some mounting brackets stuffed inside the styrofoam here. So these are rack mounts. So if you're going to rack mount this in your rack, that's a nice touch that they included both of these guys. On the bottom of the box, we have the remote control, some batteries, dead rack calibration mic, and the rack mounting screws. So this guy's pretty heavy. This thing weighs 50 pounds. Size wise, it measures the standard 17 inches wide by seven inches tall by 18 and a half inches deep. So it's a pretty big unit. Let's take a look up front. We've got your power button, IR sensor, directional pad, input selection, menu button, and the back button. Front HDMI input, along with the USB input. Here we've got a seven inch front panel display. The volume knob is on the right. And on the bottom we have the surround button, the display button, and the mute button. Let's swing it around and check out the back. We have two HDMI outputs. Both of them should support 4K HDR output. We have eight HDMI 2.0 ins, three optical inputs and three coax ins, a pair of balanced inputs, four unbalanced inputs, multi-channel unbalanced ins. And here we've got 14 unbalanced pre-outs. On the end here is the main power switch, the power inlet, and on the bottom are your binding posts for all seven channels. Specs for this guy, it is rated at seven channels at 140 watts per channel, all channels driven, at 4 ohms or 100 watts per channel all channels driven at 8 ohms or if you want to do two channel with it this is 4 ohms at 200 watts per channel or at 8 ohms 135 watts per channel also the new thing for the mark ii is that it does come with the direct live le that's why you get the calibration mic i believe the mark one did not have that so that is going to be like the main feature of this guy now this is a 7.1.4 processor with power for only seven channels if you want to run four high channels, you will need an external amplifier. This does support Dolby Atmos and DTSX, and it does have Class AB amps built into it. So let's go ahead, get this thing set up. Out of the box, this only has seven channels of amplification. So I'm going to start off and hook this up in my living room, which is a five channel Martin Logan SLM setup with a pair of REL 1205 subwoofers. Let's take a quick look at the settings. The first one is the input setup. You can choose any one of the available sources to make changes to. You can rename the source, change the available input for the source, and change the audio input for the source too. You can assign a trigger and choose the default audio mode. They're source dependent, stereo, three stereo, five channel, Dolby upmixing, and neural X upmixing. Audio delay and level adjust down to a negative six. And on the bottom is where you'll choose your direct measurement. Under audio configuration, there's 5.1, 5.1 with a biamp option, 5.1.2, 5.1.4 with use of an external amp for the extra two top channels, 7.1, 7.1.2 with external amp for the overheads, 7.1.4 with external overhead amp, 5.1.4 with external amp for the fronts, 7.1.2 with external amp for the fronts and 7.1.4 with external amps for the front and the surrounds so you get a bunch of different options here speaker configuration is where you'll specify if you've got small or large speaker or if you've got a subwoofer and under advanced is where you'll change your crossover from 40 to 200 hertz speaker distance you can change in 0.25 increments Subwoofer setup lets you change the volume per audio format from a negative six to a plus 10. Speaker level setup. Under video setup, you can specify which input remains active while the unit is powered off. Fast audio sync and change the on-screen display between 480 or 576p. Under system setup, you can change the default language. Change where the on-screen display is output. Adjust the front panel brightness. Network wake up auto power down timer, default volume when you power the unit on, power mode between normal and quick startup, and signal sense input. There's network settings and the software information. 
Once you download the Dirac software, you'll see that the 1580 pops up on screen. Even though the Rotel comes with its own calibration mic, I'm going to be using my own U-Mic 1 microphone instead for the calibration. On the next screen, you'll need to raise the volume until you get all the speakers at about the same volume. Once that's done, you'll need to choose your listening position. There's focused imaging, which is 13 measurement points, wide, which is 17 points, and tightly focused, which is nine points, and the one that I'm gonna use. Place the mic at the positions on screen till all spots are measured. The more measurements, the longer it's gonna take. This took me about 20 minutes or so. Proceed to the filter design and you'll be brought to the target curve section. By moving the slider, you can limit the correction in any direction, either the higher frequencies or you can do just the lower frequencies or the entire thing. By picking any one of these points, you can raise or lower any specific band to create your own curve. This area on the right lets you choose which speaker you want to adjust or you can do them in groups. Once you do all the tweaking you need done, you'll move to the next screen which you can save your measurements. There are six available slots and you can rename each one. You can have one for home theater and you can have one for two channel. You've got up to six to play around with. Once you save the measurements, you'll have to go into the menu on the 1580 and select the one that you want. Unfortunately, you can't swap measurements on the fly for quick comparisons. You're always gonna have to dive into the menus to make changes. First demo I popped on was Tron Legacy on Blu-ray. It's got a 7-channel DTS HD mix that's bass heavy with a lot of surround sound movement. Watching this movie on the 1580 Mark II was like watching it again for the first time. Now the Martin Logan SLM speakers don't produce much meaningful bass, so the subwoofer integration is incredibly important. After the room correction, the soundstage is horizontally expansive with very smooth channel to channel panning. Those light cycles travel front to back and side to side, leaving no noticeable gaps between transitions. The musical notes remain clean and bombastic, with zero strain on the internal amps at loud volumes. And even though there are no height channels in this mix, there is a sense of vertical envelopment. Moving the Rotel over to my home theater, I ran a 7.1.4 setup using PSB PWM speakers and a pair of Perlison D15 subwoofers. I'm also going to be using my Macintosh 5 channel amp to power the 4 height channels, which I totally know is overkill, and my sources were Kaleidoscape and as a PD media player. Since the noise floor is super quiet with barely a hint of hiss coming from the speakers, I popped in a quiet place for its very nuanced Atmos mix. As good as it sounded in my living room, it's even better with more speakers. Since this movie relies on subtle ambiance, I found the Rotel to deliver all the tiny effects in ultra-high realism. It'll make it seem like your walls have disappeared. The overhead extension creates an undetached dome of sound with the lower channels, which is what you want with top-tier processing. You don't want the height channels to sound separate from the other channels in the system. Next demo, I wanted something a bit more demanding, so I threw in Ready Player One, which has a Dolby Atmos mix. Once again, the surround sound movement was flawless. When the coins drop from above your head, you can almost count where each one falls on the floor. You can also feel the foot stomps when Kong is jumping from building to building and around behind your head. It's such a clean, intricately detailed presentation that doesn't get muffled or congested with so many effects going at the same time. Even at extreme volumes, soundstage didn't collapse on itself or become compressed. I also like the amount of clarity you get from the surround channels. 
on a few other receivers I've had in, they tend to have a tough time bringing out the nuances in a well-mixed soundtrack, which can leave you wondering if the surround channels or even the height channels are even doing anything. The Rotel sounded very accurate, and I was hearing the same details I'm used to hearing on my reference setup. At the time of this video, the Rotel 1580 Mark II was selling for $5,500. Now there are a couple things worth mentioning in regards to room correction. This does come with Dirac Live LE, which limits corrections up to 500 Hz. If you want full bandwidth correction, you can upgrade for an extra $99. If you want Dirac Bass Live Control, that isn't available since there is only a single LFE channel that's split between two outputs, so they're not independent from one another. Since the Perlisten subs I used for the review has their own DSP, I was able to calibrate them individually for better response. That said, for the asking price, there are other options out there that offer more features for the same or less money. Smart features, multi-room audio, and high-res wireless streaming are some things you might want at this price point. And the fact that you will need extra amplifiers if you want to go to 11 channels will add an additional cost. Now I have heard some receivers that pack in so many of those extra features that they forget the most important aspect, and that's the audio quality. The 1580 Mark II performed like Rotel's own separates, just in one box. Unlike most AVRs which inflate their all channels driven power output, the Rotel does 100 watts all channels driven at once. Unless you've got an entire room full of electrostats that you want to run full range, it'll have enough juice to drive most home theater setups. It was one of the cleanest, quietest AVRs that I've heard, and it delivers an extremely dynamic surround sound experience. For two-channel listening, I found it to be neutral without an emphasis in either direction. It wasn't quite as robust or transparent as Rotel's Michi that I reviewed earlier, but that's also twice the cost. Overall, if you're looking for that separate performance, want to save on space, and don't need all the bells and whistles, the 1580 Mark II is one of the simplest, best-sounding amp combos out there that you can get. So those are my thoughts on the Rotel 1580 Mark II. Have you guys heard one and what do you think of the performance? Also, would you pick something else over the Rotel? Leave a comment down below and let us know. Now if you do want to pick one of these up, I'll leave some links for it down below in the video's description. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you again in the next video.